So this video will be slightly different in that we're going to show the screen rather than screen recording. And that's because a lot of people have asked about how to show, um, as I'm working, how to show the, the hand gestures and the things like pinch and zoom and how to use these icons here down the side as well as sort of a little bit of use of the pen. So if you've been wondering a little bit about what these buttons do and not following it 100% then this is the video for you. So let's dive right in. So let's take a look at the absolute basics of movement inside of Forger. Quite a few people have asked, um, would it be easy to show how um, I move my hands and how I, where I touch all of the icons and what I do, because it's hard to show it when you're just showing a screen recording. So this is going to be that video that explains pretty much how to do it. So if you've got any model, so you can either import it or you can just get the basics, you can get them from up here at the top left on this little box here. Uh, when you, This is a basic sphere. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the move tool. So you click the move tool there and you can slide up and down here for the size. So if you can see the little circle around here, that gives you an indication of the size. It gets bigger and smaller as you do that. If you want to work symmetrically, you make sure you're on here. So there's a little X there. And what does that mean? Well, if we rotate round by dragging the finger around and then I do move again, you can see that it's affecting it on both sides. And that means we're affecting it um, as you, if you're sculpting a head, you're going to affect both sides as you sculpt. Now, what I'm doing with my fingers is I'm pinching and zooming, uh, basically pinching and zooming. So as you pinch, you zoom down and up. And if you want to keep going, you can let go and do it again. And that's how you get your scale. If you ever get lost with that, if you just hit this button down here at the bottom, the little button with the circle and the square, that gives you a framing and it gives it brings it back to this, the center of the world. So let's carry on moving it around. If I want to move things around, I want to do what's called a pan. I just two fingers on the screen and zoom around like this. So you just move it around, that's called panning around. So now you've got rotate with your finger, zoom in and out with the pinch, or, or pan left and right and up and down. And that basically means if you've got a head, so let's just quickly make this into a head. So we're using still the move tool. So let's pull out, we'll rotate it around. We'll pull out a nose, very rudimentary. Pull out what's gonna be the eye socket and pull out the chin. Rotate around and you can see what I did there at the bottom is I pulled each side, but it didn't pull the middle. So the reason you need to always be moving around is you've got to see things in 3D all the time. So keep moving things around. If you need to pinch and zoom, be doing this all the time. So as you're watching my videos, I'm literally doing this all the time that I'm working and talking. Move it around. Now, at some point, I might go too far and I might want to say, right, let's uh, let's now add some more clay. So if you, you change your um, tools simply by clicking them up here, and if you want to move this around, you can move it to all parts of the screen. So let's go to clay. You know how to change the size now with the pen or your finger, and now we can just paint some clay. Now it's starting to get a bit creased there, so we do something called remesh, which is click on mesh, Set the resolution, doesn't really matter for this test. We'll go quite high because we want a lot of detail and hit remesh. And what that does is underneath, it adds more geometry across the whole model. But do you see how messy it's gone? So how do we solve that? So we now need to smooth. And there is a smooth tool on here, but there's a set of things that, that, that I really want to share, which is these icons here. And these icons here are what you do with your hand, your non-dominant hand, call it. So call the pen hand your dominant hand. This is your non-dominant hand. So if I want to smooth, it's this wiggly line here. So I just press down and then paint. And that smooths it down. So if you're on the tool that's, if, if you're on the clay tool, this is part of the process that you'll do all the time. So you'll stroke with your pen and that's adding the clay. And then you'll click on that and smooth it down. And that way you're constantly smoothing and adding. And you see how rough it went there because I went too far. So then you can remesh. So I'll go a bit higher again. 
So the, so the workflow for the first session that you do should be this, which is smooth it, add more clay, smooth it. If you feel like it's getting messy, hit remash. And that will be most of what you do for the first session. Um, see how it's got really nasty there? So we can go smooth. Let's bring that brush size down a bit. It doesn't look like anything yet because all we're doing is we're doing what's called blocking out at this stage. So I'll just do a, a minute or two of just blocking something out. So we want a nose. And then suddenly, one of the next questions that we might ask is how do I make a hole or a mouth or an ear or something like that where I need to go inside the mesh? So let's have a look at it with the nostrils. So I'll smooth all this down first of all. Let's get that lip going. I'm gonna use the move tool for a second just to move things around a little bit more how I'd, how I'd want them. The head's nowhere near the shape that we'd want, so we move around. Let's move it out. A lot, big brush, big sweeping moves like this. So you can see all I've done, I've, I mean, I'm gonna change the model radically now with just a few moves, um, but the head wasn't the right shape at all. So, and you can do this really quickly because in fact, is, is a good example now, let's put a neck on. So to do a neck, all we might need to do is this, just pull it out, but then it's made a real mess, hasn't it? See how it's stretching it at the bottom. So how do we solve that quickly? Well, you already know it's remesh and what that does is now it gives you the ability to this is now all decent mesh it's a bit messy there so you remember how to fix it it's just smooth it and then back to clay smaller size and then add those muscles and then remesh if you feel like you need to you probably don't need to remesh quite as much as i'm doing but i just want to show you Let's put some geometry in where the ear is going to go. Again, it can be messy. But as long as there's something there when we remesh. If I'm teaching this with another program called ZBrush, what I say is there's two phases that you're in during your modeling. Or you can work it out this way if you like. So you've got creation and refinement. And in creation, that means you anything goes. You don't know what you want yet. So you're adding um, different parts of the body, you're adding ears, you're adding fingers and noses. And at that point, you can use remesh all you want because you're being, you're being quite destructive, you're gonna, you're gonna be changing things a lot. So the remeshing doesn't, doesn't, you know, you should not be doing any detail in this early stage at all. This is just about blocking out and just giving you the shapes that you want or the silhouettes that you want. You can see with mine, it, it's changed radically already. Um, just because I'm finding shapes uh, and trying to find some anatomy. And then when you've got to the point where you've got everything that you want, you think you know, you've know you got the right number of uh, ears, the right number of noses, et cetera, et cetera, then, then you can move to refinement. And that's when you stop using remesh. Then when you start thinking about detailing and, and all of the other stuff that comes after that. So try and think about it that way for, for your one of your sessions where you say, right, I'm just gonna block things out and use remesh uh, indiscriminately, really. So we're gonna, um, you notice I'm switching back and to to the move tool. And now I'm gonna do the bit that I was just talking about, which is I'm gonna indent into the head somewhere. So let's think about this carefully. So where would we want to, to indent? So we're gonna put a separate eye, so not in there. So maybe under the nose. So I'm just gonna smooth it down a bit more. And remember, we're, that was on the move tool. If you switch to clay tool, and then smaller brush, and if I was to paint around here, you already know what's gonna happen. We pinch and zoom in. That's still building up, isn't it? But now we want to intrude. So it's basically this minus and plus button here. And that gives us the opposite effect of the, of the brush that we're working on. So positive, negative, positive, negative and that's a very simple one to learn so the bit under the nose there is called the filtrum we know we want that the lips we want a bit of volume there maybe a lot of volume here and then where he's got a cheek fold quite a lot of volume again look how rough i'm being i'm just building up chunks of muscle or fat in this case um, and i'm not really worrying too much about anything else i'm just saying let's give me let, can i just have one of everything that i need to get this model in, in, in a uh, the right sort of shape. 
So it might even be as rough as this here. I'm just blocking this out here, and there's the neck. Um, but it's starting to it's starting to feel like it's got some shape to it now. So it's got the basics of the muscles that I want. Make sure if you don't know head anatomy or you don't know whatever you're doing's anatomy, then that, that you've got reference in front of you. Um, over the years, you'll get you you know you will get to the point where you don't need it as much. But the best the best of the best ways of doing it is keeping that reference in front of you all the time. See how I'm smoothing that back down now, and that takes away all of that messiness. And then you know what I'm going to do? As soon as I've got that done, let's see what we do next. We do a remesh. And that will make all of the geometry even. And now, just after that few minutes, I'm in a point now where I can start thinking about some detailing. So we've, we've, we've blocked out roughly the head that we want in, in literally no time at all. So it's a grumpy old man, apparently. Um, OK. So the next little bit along here, let me just can't stop noodling. It's it's one of the problems that we have as digital sculptors is you just want to keep playing with it when you should be teaching. So okay, so you understand um, most of these. This top one here, I'm going to show you, but we won't use it in this video. It's masking. So if I hold that down, that is now a mask, and we're going to do a whole lesson on that. So you know what that one is. The next one down is quite interesting. If you hold down on this one and move it around, you get the light. So that is really interesting because the, the light changes on your model as it does in the real world. And it looks more dramatic if you put it above. It looks scary if you put it below. It looks one way from the left and one way from the right. So you should move your light around so that you can see that your model is, is going to react to, to that light. So for example, a big forehead will give you a big shadow. A smaller forehead, less of a shadow. So you've got to you've got to decide how deep that furrow is based with the with the lighting. So move your lighting around quite a lot. And then the other one here is camera, and that just gives you a pan like that. It pretty much gives you the same effect as, as if you were doing two fingers. So uh, whether you need that or not, I don't know. That's just a very very quick video to give you a, a rough idea of how you use these panels here on the right. And don't forget you've got a lot of settings here on the bottom so you can click along here and start getting a feel for things like putting the grid on, the wireframe on that we discussed, and then some different types of shading which we'll cover again in other videos. Have a great week and see you soon.